in sedimentary rocks, uh, what you need so to have a, a, a good reservoir uh, rock is porosity interconnected. Okay, so these rocks are like have been formed from the sedimentation of grains. Uh, normally, when the grains are not enough uh, large, uh, coarse in, 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 in theoretical terminology, uh, they prevent, they don't let the oil and gas to move. So when you have, in geology, when uh, we we use the, term, the terms siltstone and mudstone to talk about the type of lithologies that are really bad at reservoirs. Uh, what you saw in there, I think, is sandstone, so it's in the side of with reservoirs. In here, the, the, the grains, and we don't have here proper grains in general, but we have is high crystals. Because these rocks are igneous, in this case volcanic, from a volcanic origin. Um, so they were magma that went through the crust, the earth crust, and at some point it, it cooled down and it crystallized. And so there's no like proper space apart from some holes in some of these basaltic rocks. I think I have some. There are some. Yeah, most of these rocks have these holes, but the problem, and they, they are, um, they have been formed from bubbles, gas bubbles that they were, they were, were dissolved in the, in the magma, and they could like uh, grow, they could um, uh, grow in the, in the magma because this, this, the basalts are really fluid, and these basalts are these lavas that you've seen documentaries in, like in Hawaii, really like uh, flowing all the way, you know, mm -hmm. they are really viscous bubbles are really difficult to form because they, they don't find that the way to expand. <coughs> but the problem is that in, this, uh, in these rocks, um, these uh, vesicles, are called vesicles, um, they are not interconnected. So you need, for a reservoir rock, you need that the, the, the space is interconnected. Yeah. <laughs> so, in general, really bad. But there's a way to make an igneous rock a good reservoir, and it's through fracturing. If you have lots, and especially microfracturing, so fractures that are less than uh, one millimeter wide. So if you have like lot of microfracturing interconnected all through the your formation, uh, it's possible for the oil and gas to move through from the source rock into the igneous rock, and maybe storage in the and form a proper reservoir. So, what you have in here, you have igneous rocks, two types. The first one being in place is this one, which is a volcanoclastic rock. It's called volcanoclastic because it's got like fragments from other uh, rocks uh, that the lava flow or the magma, which was traveling through the crust, was incorporating because you have these uh, igneous rocks, volcanics, are uh, coming from chambers in maybe kilometers, like beneath the, the spare surface. And this magma, when it finds, when it has got enough like a power to, to move upwards, it breaks the crust. Normally it goes through, through uh, fractures, faults. Mm -hmm. It moves and it rips up like parts of the lithologies that are over the uh, over the, the magma chamber and it incorporates all these bits and you can see some like fragments uh, like this glass fragments from other uh, lithologies other formations in the earth crust so it's called volcanoplastic so this was the first one to be in place uh, now we see all this rock like here in the surface on the beach but uh, obviously in here like a lot of these uh, meters and meters probably tens of meters of this formation were eroded by the sea, by the rain, by everything. Um, uh, so what you see now is just something that it was, it crystallized really uh, in a, I don't know, like maybe hundreds of meters like beneath the surface at that time. Then, after this volcanoplastic intrusive igneous rock made its way and crystallized and it like uh, got solid. That's the, 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 
type of rock you, you, you see now is this solidification. Then after that, something has happened. And this like tabular oh, uh, element yeah. here mm -hmm. is this what happened. It's called a dike. Ah, this is a dike. A dike ah, okay. is a term also only for, uh, well, it's also used in sedimentary rocks, but, but it's, it's something that uh, is, it implies that it's something that went through uh, a rock formation, cutting it in a following a, a, a predominantly like one direction, so like like this case. So you have like uh, another uh, magmatic rock making, trying to make its way through this previous magmatic rock that is now uh, solid. And in this case, it's very clear that it, it made its way following like a like a clear direction, orientation, and like following like a space well constrained, like tabular. So what is this? What what is this? How how this is possible? Um, dikes need like or magma uh, related to dikes uh, make made its, its way through fractures. So this dike, the tabular geometry, is representing the orientation of a former fracture. Maybe it was like a just a discontinuity, like. You know, or any other like fractures you see here, like this one. You see this, this fracture in here. Well, imagine that beneath the, the earth, like a few meters beneath, we have a, a small chamber full of magma with a lot of gas and it's wanting to go through the rock mm. and it finds this discontinuity. It's going to go through this continuity rather than to other, other parts of the rock where, yeah. where it's, it's more difficult. And when it, it uses this fracture, it's going to open it a bit more while it's like Comes feeling up. yeah so it's open it and finally when this magma stops moving upwards mm -hmm. it's going to crystallize and it's going to get solid like this excuse me but it's correct to to name to the these fractures a joint without displaying yeah the in difference between uh, fractures in, in general when you don't really know it's a general term fracture when you know that there's been displacement between one side of the rock respect to the other, uh -huh. you say fault. When you think that is the, the probably there's no displacement, you use joint. Okay, so it's independent of the kind of rock. It's, it's a general yeah, term. It's just respect to if you see displacement or, or not. Okay. So, so what's this so part? Actually, it's not a fault over there. Uh -huh. Can I say we did see a fault there, or was it just a displacement? I don't know. Well, so, mm. so is this class as a, a fracture still? So even this though magma, yeah, m uh, or this dike, sorry, this dike is uh, telling you that there's w there was here like a nice fracture, maybe a fault, I don't know, nice fracture, where the magma uh, found easier, you know, to, to ma make its way uh, to the, uh, the crust. So, the so the there fracture the was on the... Magma was on the other rock. Was in the in this rock, yeah, no. in the in the former one. So it's something that the 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 uh, timeline would be like the volcanoclastic, <laughs> this one, uh, in truth, like the the crust and uh, crystallizes, becomes solid. Then there's some kind of tectonics in the area. So tectonics is just that the the the, the earth is moving all the time, you know, and you have plates and are like colliding up. And in this process, it's like the fractures develop in, in many scales. And at some point, this volcanoclastic uh, already solid formation fracture in, in, a pat in, in some patterns, like, and you don't know this pattern. But this dike is telling you at least one of the orientation of this network of, of, of uh, fractures because you know that this dike was using a fracture. So you, you can measure in here the orientation of this fracture. Yeah. And why it's so important? Because it's going to tell you also this, this fracture is gonna probably repeat in different scales, in a micro scale, <coughs> other set of fra fractures that you can see in thin sections even. You, you are really interested about the, the thin section, the, the micro scale, because you are reservoir engineers or you, you are going to be reservoir engineers and you want to know how 
uh, oil and gas or how easy it is for oil and gas to move through these blocks. Uh, and this happens in a micro scale because they are like a, like they, they, they move through like a like a drops or, or small amounts of, of oil and gas moving through really you know the the, the, the spaces that are in the rock. Uh, so in igneous rocks, if you want to know if this is a good or bad reservoir rock, you need to look at uh, fractures in different scales. This is the main point for igneous rocks. There's no intergranular inter inter porosity because you don't have uh, gran uh, clasts like uh, granules, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, everything is crystal. So, and, um, dikes are really important also because ima imagine that this rock, the volcanoclastic, is in a small scale, is full of microfractures. And you know, you see in fact that there are like a uh, front your symptoms because you have samples from drilling holes and you, you see in your thin sections oil in this microfracture. And you see, oh, this, uh, this is working as a reservoir. But then you find, when you drill, you also find this light in here. And you get a sample from the light. Uh, <coughs> you see that it's not fractured and, well, there are some fractures but they don't have oil. They are not interconnected. I, I run down fractures and they are not interconnected. So you think, oh my god, I mean, I know that this is a dike. I know that a dike stretches like extends for I don't know how much but it acts as, as, a, as a barrier because it's in this case because a proper barrier for oil and gas it's a trap because it's going to like to act as a you know something that is preventing the oil to move through it so it's important I found something that is going to keep my oil and gas you know being accumulated in some areas and this is going to uh, um, affect the pressure gradients in your reservoir so like you see? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But do you see that trap? If in this uh, hypothetic case, imagine that this rock is really like well fractured with oil, like uh, you know, in the microfactures, but this one is not. Mm. So but when you have this dike forming, do you still have a fracture that propagates along the dike as well? Yeah. So do you have Normally. a path? Does it actually seal or does it create a path? Ah, this is a good question. Yeah. Because uh, you, you, sometimes there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uncertainty and Maybe you have to play with these different hypotheses. Okay, I know this, this is going to happen. The, the dike is going to finish, but maybe the, the, the fracture is not finishing. Maybe, or maybe it's also the dike is, is finishing as the, the fracture ends up.